What's up guys, it's Dolm Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to Kevin Samuels Explains High Value Cold Hard Truth. This is from the Fresh and Fit Podcast, it's actually on their Clips channel. Um, I'm well aware of who Kevin Samuels is, and I've, I've seen a lot of his stuff. I actually did a video, fuck, it's got to be like six months ago now, eight months ago now, whenever he passed away. Um, kind of reacting to like the unhinged Twitter comments about Kevin Samuels. Um, so yeah, this video is about you know him explaining high value, so uh, yeah, let's kind of get into it. Women, maybe even older women, mm -hmm. as to how to lock down a high value man. You know, you're getting 5,000 plus people watching you uh, asking these questions. What would be the one of the biggest takeaway tips you could give to women in the current dating marketplace to lock down, down a high value bit. guy? Mm. Stop. That should be good. Stop. Because only 10% of you are going to get it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he nailed it there, right? And and you see, you see this a lot. Um, you know, it, it's been talked about a lot before, but, like, a lot of girls, because they, you know, guys will sleep down. Like, we even, like, when I was in high school, we used to call slumming it. Um, I don't know if that's still a term, but, like, when I was in high school, that's what we called it. Uh, where you sleep with, like, some really ugly or fat girl uh, just to, you know, get something quick. And I think, I think that makes a lot of girls delusional, right? You'll see, like, a lot, even on the show, right, on Fresh and Fit's podcast, you'll see a lot of girls come on here who are, like, if I'm being generous, they're, like, a four, right? They're, like, extremely overweight. They've got, like, way too much makeup caked on. Their personalities are just fucking horrendous. And th th they'll rate themselves, like, a nine or a ten, right? And, I, I like, those girls, you know, the problem is, you know, th yeah, they've probably slept with a guy who's like an eight nine or ten before but then like that guy's never gonna wife them up right like that's the reality of the situation and it, when you're looking for a long-term relationship you, you really have to punch at your weight it's really hard to punch above your weight um and a lot of like yeah if, if you're a fucking 35 you know 40 year old obese woman with three kids in tow which is like what he does a lot of his videos there's like a lot of single mothers and stuff that came on back when he was doing his show you know it's it's gonna be really hard to like why would it got like why would a really good looking successful guy with you know hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars try to wife up a girl with like three kids who's you know 40 and overweight when you know he has this dude has so many options he can literally did 20 year olds like look at Leonardo DiCaprio right if you're that like hyper successful dude right that like top even top 10 percent right like the top 10 percent of guys you, you have so many options compared to that woman, right? They're trying to punch well above their weight, and I think that's the issue is that they don't realize. So many of them don't want to just admit that they're average, or in a lot of cases, even below average. Um, and they try to punch well above their weight, and it, it really just doesn't work. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Look, I, I look, one of the biggest 20% uh, of you can qualify for it, maybe 10% of you will land it. And yep. That's really what my show is based on. You can, I, I don't begrudge you wanting what you want, but you're an eight, nine, and 10, well, actually an adjustable six, eight or nine in the looks, and are you an eight, nine, or 10 in the body? If not, move along. Move along. Um, <laughs> this is South Beach. You don't come to South Beach if you rock in a one piece. This is two piece town. This mm -hmm. is a bikini town. Mm -hmm. So this high value thing has worked because it just says women are hypergamous. They want to consolidate on the highest value man possible, but that may be different. See, that's possible. What's possible for Tina is not possible for Angie, is not mm -hmm. possible for Hillary. So now I got women finally asking themselves the question, what? I think a big issue when it comes to like both men and women is that they tend to like push their views onto the other sex a lot of the time, right? So you'll see guys that are you know, slightly above average looking, right? Even sometimes pretty decent looking, right? Like guys that are like, you know, a seven or an eight. And they think like an eight, nine or 10 is going to go out with them because they're a seven or eight, but they're like complete bums. They have like nothing going for them aside from being, you know, above average looks. And then on the opposite side, you have women who become, you know, incredibly successful. And they think that a lot of men are interested in that. And it's like, yeah, there are certain guys who are going to be interested in that. But the vast majority of men, right? are not really caring of what the woman does for work, right? That's just not a... That's generally nothing guys look for, right? 
like they'll, they'll, they definitely don't want a complete disaster case, but like other than that, they don't really care. And and I mean honestly, some dudes will date complete disaster cases just because they look really good and they're, you know, out of their league, um, in terms of like looks, right? So if it, like, you get like a guy that's like a, a a five or a six, but like really really successful, he might date a girl that's a ten, but like an absolute fucking disaster. Um, but like a lot of these girls, the problem is like they're. They're average at best, but they want, like, dudes that are tens across the board. And it's like, that dude has way too many options. He's not going to go for you. And, you know, yeah, like, okay, you make, you know, $100,000, $150,000, $200,000 a year. But the 10 out of 10 guy, you know, if, if he's, like, maxed across the board, right, he, he's got supermodels after him. He's got, you know, Instagram girls after him. He's got even just, like, good-looking girls that are, you know, working – average jobs after him right there's so many more options for that guy that it's just not realistic for you to attempt to i mean you can attempt it but like it's not realistic for you to actually like think it's going to happen what does the kind of man that you want want from a woman mm. put it back on them yep. for once huh? yep. well and, and, and that's why i'm sitting here and i'm like and i hear some i hear when i first start talking about this same kind of concept that honestly it, it's been floating around the sphere yeah a lot you know uh, I've talked about this stuff for years, but moment at time it hit. Um, some of my detractors like, you're so mean, you're so rude, you're so this, you're that. But you know what? Women are saying, I like your delivery, I like your approach, for your honesty, because what they're doing is not working. Right. Look on your left finger and ask yourself, are you sporting the wedding ring <laughs> of a man of value? <laughs> that's, that's another thing. That, like, that's a good point. A lot of people... It's not the message, it's how you get it across, right? So I've seen, you know, uh, I've watched like a couple of just pearly things videos over the last couple of days, and I've watched like, you know, Myron, like Fresh and Fit, um, and you, you, you see like the reaction, but like the, the funny thing is they tell them basically the exact same thing, but just pearly things, obviously, like being a woman, she's a lot more sensitive about it, and it generally comes across a lot better, like a lot of the girls are a lot less mad when she says it. Whereas when, you know, they hear it from a guy, especially, like, you know, assertive guys that are just going to tell them, like, straight to the point and not kind of beat around the bush. Um, you know, like, a lot of it has to do with, like, the delivery, like, how you tell them. Um, I feel like that's just kind of, like, with women in general. Men tend to be a lot more direct, and women tend to be indirect, right? You can even see this in, like, the way men and women fight. Men tend to be, you know, they'll go head-to-head -head verbally, and then maybe it'll even come to blows, Right. Um, women will be like very passive aggressive with each other when they're fighting right the, oftentimes they won't actually say something they'll just be like oh like th th there's like so it's like almost a comedic trope right like I, I think family died did a skit at one point where it was like these teenage girls like just fucking passively aggressive fight passively passive aggressively fighting each other and the one girl's like oh I wouldn't wear that if I were you and she's like oh I wouldn't eat that if I were you right like it's they're never direct right the, the, like whereas the guy would be like yo dude like you're getting fucking fat you need to lay off the chocolate bars and the, the guy would be like what the other guy would be like oh what the fuck are you wearing like you look like a retard right so the, there's definitely a much different approach when it comes to in general how the sexes kind of you know give out and receive information if not it's not working right mm -hmm. And I would tell women if they want a high value man, understand. You gotta not, you have to put a lifestyle plan together for that. You have to you have to really scrutinize yourself inside and out, head to toe. You gotta be brutally honest. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna have to do something most women aren't willing to do. Mm -hmm. Develop a financial strategy to enter into the market. It costs money to live in these areas to be around men like this. Mm, yes. And you're going to have to invest, which means sacrifice. And then educate yourself. You know, if you want to be around a man who's an entrepreneur or a business owner, you have to understand the, the language, the lingua franca of all these things and then take action. Many women just thought it was just good enough to be pretty and have wow. And that's not enough. Especially after college. Like, that's the big thing is like in college and university. Yeah, you're going to be around a lot of, you know, future successful people. Um, but the reality is like once you get out of college, right, like unless you're actually in some environment where that's the norm, right? Like maybe if you get into like business administration or, you know, real estate or, you know, all some of these different fields that, you know, tend to have a lot more wealthy people in them. You, you know, you might be around wealthy people a lot, but like if you're trying to get into like a really high-end club, unless you show up and you're like an absolute dime piece, they're not gonna let you in for free, right? Like a lot, if you go to like a really, really nice club, 
you're not getting in for free unless you're like a 10 out of 10, right? Like they're not even gonna let eights and nines in for free. They gotta buy their way in. Um, so yeah, like if you wanna get around those kind of guys, I mean, now it's easier than ever because you have, like, Instagram and stuff. So, like, if you're posting bikini pics and shit, that's one way. But the problem is a lot of guys don't want to date those girls seriously anyway, right? There are some dudes who will do it. But a lot of these girls, like, they'll get their DMs slid into and then, like, you know, they'll get slid into. And then they think, like, oh, well, he fucked me, therefore he loves me. And it's like, nah, men and women, like, approach sex very differently, right? Because, of like, years of evolution, millions of years of evolution, you know, a woman has to, because of, like, the risks that come with, like, pregnancy and shit, Women have to, you know, try and find someone that's actually going to take care of them and provide for them and protect them. Um, men can just bust a nut and bail, right? Like, y- your what men need to do, men can, like, you know, spread seed everywhere, right? If you're, like, a really, you know, successful, high-value man, you can easily spread seed everywhere and then go back and focus on your one main chick. Whereas women basically have to, like, try and hitch down one guy. Um, and then w- often what you see, you know, especially if you look at like, you know, histo- you know, roughly depends on the era, but like over the course of history, roughly 40% of men have bred throughout history, right? So like everyone that alive today is the product of about 40% of all males who have ever lived. The reason for that is because a lot of the time, like even during Christian times and shit, you know, women would get married to, you know, uh, it's like alpha fucks, beta bucks, right? Which you hear a lot. Um, you know, they would get married to a guy, but then they go sleep with like a higher status guy that was actually willing to sleep with them, right? And then they would have the lower status guy basically care for the offspring. Um, you know, he, he basically, you know, get the best option you can um, and then also get a provider. But again, like a lot of this comes down to just like, you know, millions of years of evolution and mating strategies, right? If a guy's willing to sleep with you, that doesn't mean he's willing to date you, where the reverse is usually true. If a woman's willing to sleep with you, she's probably willing to date you. Kevin, you know what's funny? <laughs> we talked about this downstairs, right? There's many beautiful women here in Miami, especially in this building, right? Mm-hmm. And as you said earlier, it's because they know being in this environment is going to nurture what they want. However, they sacrifice a lot to be here. Mm-hmm. Some flew from Idaho, Texas, you name yeah, it. Exactly. All to come here because one is a, is a thriving, um, happy community. Yeah. I don't want to say the word. Yeah. And also because they know a lot of affluent guys are in this building and around this area. That's right. And that's the thing. It's like um, men understand that we have to be competitive. And like I said, yep. one of the biggest things is I don't begrudge women, women wanting what they want. Mm-hmm. Are you willing to Are you willing to compete to get it? And I talk to women mm-hmm. all the time, yeah. and I use my professional sales skills, um, my probing, my questioning, my ability to reframe, restate. It's all sales. Yeah, and. Um, Oftentimes, a salesperson would blow a sale because you would assume something that was not there instead of asking a question a different way or losing your patience or getting off track, and it costs you money. So people are like, I don't know if I could have the patience. I'm like, if your money's online, I don't know why you better develop more patience. Man, uh, I actually kind of disagree with them there. I think if you look at like, you know. I think a, a lot of women are willing to put in some amount of work, especially when they're younger. Um, and it's, you know, I'm basing this off my age group. Again, I think he was, like, in his 50s or 60s when he's talking about this now. Um, but, like, a lot of guys my age are, like, not willing to do anything, right? Like, not, none of them really want to work. None of them want to get to the gym, right? Like, the gym bro culture is huge, but that's not really a large population. Um, like, I, I, you know, the town I live in has two gyms. Um, and I bet you both of them between each other have about 50 people, right? And the majority of those are actually older dudes. Um, you know, there's maybe, I would say, five or ten guys that are in high school. And, and you know, it's a town of a population about uh, 2,000, 2,500. Um, you know, the, the school population is around, like, three to four hundred when i was in high school uh, my grade 11 year it was the most students they ever had it was 385 i don't know if they have more or less now but <clears throat> but gen- guys nowadays it, it seems like a lot of them really aren't willing to compete right it's the kind of participation trophy culture um there, there's like less participation in sports right like guys don't want to work jobs especially like physical labor jobs despite the fact that a lot of them pay really well right like you can go get like a trade or construction job and make more than somebody who has a fucking four-year degree um, but people still want to go to school because they don't want to do that physical labor. Um, so I think, you know, part of that, I think, is just a cultural change over the years. Um, but then also, I think part of that also has to do with, like, the testosterone levels dropping drastically. But then, like, when it comes to women at the gym, 
you know, there's a couple older ladies, but the majority of them are like girls in like their teens and twenties, right? Um, generally, it, it, it tends to, you know, I feel like, you know, maybe this is just an age difference thing because again, he is like 40, 50 years older than me. Um, or I guess not 50, he's like 40 years older than me. But fucking, you know, women tend to be much more willing to work for it than men are. And I feel like that's actually a big issue we have in society is that there's not a lot of, you know, there's not enough guys that are seen as suitable candidates because, I mean, realistically, if I was a woman, I wouldn't want to date those fucking bums either, right? And, I mean, that's the reality of the situation, right? Guys need to fucking step up. Um, you know, I think women do too, right? Like, especially when it comes to, like, you know, getting fucking... I knew one girl in high school that had 100 bodies before she was out of high school, right? And then she was, you know, she's like the fucking cat lady now, and she's not even 30, right? She's talking about, like, nobody wants to date her and all this shit. And it's like, you live in a small town, and you slept with half the guys in our high school. Like, of course nobody's going to want to date you. Like, she was a pretty good-looking girl, too, but, like, nobody wants that, you know, like, hit to their social status. Because if you're the one dating her, then you look like a fucking idiot, right? Um, so, Ke Kevin, I want to ask this, because and this one, uh, I apologize, it's not on the list, but I just had to ask this, because... One thing I love about your show, which I think a lot of us in here can agree, mm. you hold both genders accountable. Mm -hmm. You hold mm -hmm. men accountable and you hold women accountable. Let's keep it real. Most guys don't have the balls to hold women accountable. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And right. tell them, hey, listen, you, under you understand that you want to deal with a top tier guy. This is what you have to do. And when, when, I, when I do watch your show, you ask very deliberate, controlled questions and the, and, the, and the women answer truthfully. And then you tell them exactly, okay, well, this is your mess up. And then they can't really there's not much they can say because you're you're doing it in a respectful manner despite them sometimes being too emotional <laughs> and my question is this because you're like you you keep it real with these women unlike other people i'm like let's say derek jackson for one right <laughs> <laughs> you know uh that's a good point like, like you gotta kill, hold both sexes accountable because the reality of the situation is you know most guys right like uh, you know excluding the top 10 percent of guys most guys really aren't trying um, you know, they're sitting at home, they're doing fuck all, they're like super out of shape, um, you know, they're not hitting the gym, they're not, you know, trying to take care of themselves, they're not trying to get like a better job, get a promotion, whatever, so they're not trying to like raise their social status in really any way, or, the, you know, their SMV in any way, um, but then again, on the opposite side, you have a lot of girls that aren't willing to do that, and you, you kind of see like both, right, you see, you see like the super simpy guys that like they, all they do is blame men, um, you know, like the you know women are perfect blah 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 and then on the other hand do you see like the fucking doomer pill guys who like you know the reason women won't sleep with me is because I'm the you know uh, my fucking eyes tilt like one degree to the left and fucking I'm you know five foot eleven and three quarters I'm not six foot and like uh, like they'll have just these absolutely like, ridiculous statements and it's like dude what I was like I know guys that are like five foot five and they were good looking athletic dudes charismatic had decent jobs and they would pull like pretty good right i feel like so many people get like doomer pilled on like one thing and they use it as like an excuse to not try to improve anything else right and it's you can almost think of it like an rpg right you have all these different stats and like yeah one of your stats may be low but you have the ability to raise the a lot of the other stats right like you you probably can't raise your height stat i mean i guess you could get like fucking platforms or whatever in your shoes right wear some shoes with like some lifts in them um but like you're, it's still only gonna help you like an inch or two, right? Like it's gonna take you from five six to five eight. Um, but like when it comes to looks, when it comes to fitness, when it comes to money, like when it comes to you know charisma, like all these other things, you can definitely improve on. And you know you, you see this kind of like you know two different edges where you have like one side where it's like everything's the man's fault, super simp dudes, and then you have the other side where everything's the woman's fault, like all oh, women are sluts, but blah blah blah. It's like no, there's lots of good girls out there. There's lots of good guys out there. The problem is. <clears throat> on average, people generally shit. Can you tell us a little bit about, um, I mean, if you want to get into it, uh, the biggest difference between someone like yourself versus, uh, you know, someone like Derek Jackson yeah. telling these girls what they want to hear? Okay. Let me relate it back to business. Yeah. Let's go. In sales, if you're in a salesperson, there's a book called The Challenger Sale. Pick it up. Read it. The challenger sales states that there are five different kinds of salesperson, relational salesperson, lone wolf, hard worker, somebody else in their challenger. And consistently in, in bull markets or bear markets and up markets or down markets, regardless as the industry or whatever, there's one kind of salesperson that 
continues to outperform all the others. Mm-hmm. And it's called the challenger. The mm. challenger is comes into uh, into the sales environment above the prospect. Mm. Now, let's imagine you guys had a, a multi-million dollar business and I'm trying to sell you guys my advertising. Yeah. Most people are gonna come in here and, hey man, I like your jacket. Hey buddy, what's yourself for a bottle? Hey, let's take you out and up to the strip club. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually sit up higher because I'm gonna learn enough about you to consult you and say, uh, I understand last year you lost this deal to your competitor. So it's the consultative sales approach of a challenger and a challenger salesperson does three things in any process. They teach, they tailor, and they take control. Mm. So when I'm talking to women, I'm teaching them something that they don't know. Okay. I tailor the message so that they can understand it, <clears throat> and I take control. And that's why most women are kind of like um, the take control part. I feel is like you know the in some ways the biggest issue, All right? Because when it comes to a lot of this stuff, um, you know, I mean, he's talking about sales here specifically, but I think understanding where someone's coming from and understanding their issues is such a big factor in really anything. Right, and the other two are kind of damps downstream from that, right? You, you know, you teach and you tailor based on you know you have to take control first to teach and tailor, right? Um, so in order to like you have to understand the issue before you can teach, you know, tailor and then teach you know the 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 the, the, the solution, right? Um, and I, I see how that applies to dating too. That's actually a great point. Receptive to the message because no one's ever kind of framed it that way, right? Um, now, a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll tell women what they want to hear, and that works to make women feel good as a placebo. Mm. But if you're a personal trainer and tell people, hey, man, eat what you want, do what you want, <laughs> you know, it's not going to help your client get any better shape. And again, women are recognizing after this beer bug, they look to the right, look to the left, there's no man there. Mm. They're saying these outcomes are not working. So a guy like I think a lot of guys will tell women what they want to hear in order to sleep with them too, right? Like that's a big factor. Um, you know, I mean, everyone knows this, right? Like you'll you'll see the guys that you know they they're very intelligent when it comes to like playing the game or having game or whatever you want to call it, and they'll tell women exactly what they want to hear to sleep with them, right? Um, and I, and again, I think that's half the reason why so many of these women have like delusional prospects on men, is because you know. They've been getting ran through by eights, nines, and tens who tell them exactly what they want to hear, despite the fact that they have no intentions of going forward. And a lot of these women, they don't, you know, they don't put themselves in a position to, you know, benefit from that, right? Like the, you know, you got to put a ring on it before you hit it type thing, um, which, I mean, it, that's incredibly uncommon now in modern society. But, you know, I mean, it worked for every, like everyone alive today, it worked for your fucking grandma, most likely, right? The majority of people. I like myself is saying something different than everybody else and showing the outcomes. My show accidentally has saved marriages. Mm. I, I, mean, I get emails weekly. You've saved my marriage. Women have called into my show saying that I'm a better wife. I'm on my husband's team. Yeah. My, I, my fu- One lady left me flat, but she's like, my future generations owe their lives to you. Wow. Wow. That's powerful. That's serious. I'm like, huh? I, I, and, and all right, we got a little bit of an ad here, but but yeah, like that's uh, the the thing that I find like with a lot of these like red pill videos and stuff is that it's it's really applicable whether you're trying to find someone to date or whether you're already in a relationship, right? Um, because like especially like when they talk about like framing and like trying to better yourself and shit, like because even if you're already in a relationship, right, um, and you want to just maintain that relationship. If all of a sudden you improve yourself, like, you know, again, like if we're talking about like an RPG bar, right? And like all your stats are, you know, 50 across the board. You're like a, a straight five, just straight across the board. And then you improve all of your stats or even some of your stats to like, you know, 75, 80, 85, whatever it is, right? You don't even have to like max out that stat, but like you just improve a bunch of different stats a little bit. Um, you know, suddenly it's much you know, the relationship is going to be much more stable in a lot of ways, right? At least on your end, um, because the other person's going to be a lot less willing to leave you because they lose a lot more from that. Um, so yeah, like a lot of this stuff is applicable, even if you're in a relationship, although like generally the stuff is about like, um, entering relationships and like 
being in the dating market. Um, but yeah, like a lot of it's like applicable to, you know, like I think just probably things that she's going to be releasing like a wife school, which I, I, I'll have to react to that because that sounds like it's going to be hilarious. I bet you there's going to be a lot of butthurt comments. And I know she got banned off of TikTok for like one of her videos when it came to something related to that. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. Because at the end of the day, it's about outcomes. And when I held my men's event, MIT, I told guys two things. Guys, life happens out there and life is about people. Ladies have forgotten that men have a want and a desire in this thing. And that's what a lot of ladies are finally starting to understand. And it's working for them. So strangely enough, it's working. Wow, man. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, it's rare to get that kind of, you know, a praise from them because you're, you're, I mean, let's, let's be honest, you're telling them the truth, the uncomfortable and unflattering realities. Hey, this is why you're single. You need to do this and do that. But I love how you kind of imply that you, you uh, use the Socratic method, ask them questions. Oh, well, I want to be a stay at home mom. Do you know how mm -hmm. much it's going to take to how, how much it's going to cost for you to get that? You're going to need mm -hmm. a guy that makes this much money. Who makes that kind of money? And you right. just let them answer the questions and come to the conclusion themselves, which is like, Ingenious, you know what I'm saying? Huh. And I want to ask Kevin, right? Because huh? we're all about being high value men here, right? Yep. But a lot of the audience may not really internalize what that really uh, means. Perfect question. Okay. <laughs> so that, that's actually a great point. Um, I, don't, I don't even know where he's going to go with the question, but I see this a lot on these videos, right? You talked about, I'll see comments on every one of these videos talking about, like, how can I do this? How can I do that? How can I do that? And it's like, just do it, right? That's the reality of the situation. They explain it every single fucking video. The problem is most people just don't do it, right? Like, hit the gym, get a better job. Um, try to start a business. Like, like, like everyone knows how to do this. And I have a friend that's like this too, right? He's been, since we were in high school, you know, I, I, uh, I've, I've worked out since I was in high school. I actually worked at a gym from when I was like 21 till 25, 26. Um, unfortunately COVID closed that gym down, but I worked at the gym for, you know, four or five years and he would message me, fuck, it's gotta be like once every month or two. And like ask about like how to get in shape. Is this a good workout? Is that a good workout? And then he would just never do it. And like I feel like so many people know what to do. They're just not willing. Especially like you know, so, so many people just know what to do, but they're just not willing to act on it. Right? Like, they just don't want to actually do the work because the reality of the situation is a lot. Like it is hard work, right? And most people, you know, humans are fucking lazy, right? Um, we want to use the least amount of energy possible to get the best results possible. And the reality of the situation is. If you actually want the best results possible, you're going to have to work very, very hard. Yes, you're going to have to work smart as well, but you're going to have to work hard. And before you can work smart, you have to work hard. Um, because again, like, you know, like the difference, like, so it, like when it comes to getting in shape, right, a lot of the time, if, if you're like really obese, first you just want to burn calories, right? Go for a walk, go for a walk, go for a walk. Um, you know, then maybe, you know, s start lifting some light weights, right? Try to get, you know your cardiovascular built up, try and get a little bit of muscle built up so that you're burning more calories. And then the slimmer and slimmer you get, then you want to start getting more into the nitty gritty. But when you're just starting a lot of the stuff, a lot of it is just actually about just working, right? And then once you actually get further and further along, then you have to start thinking more. But like when you're at the start, a lot of it is just about doing, right? It's, it's more about doing than it is about thinking. Um, the further you get along and the, the more successful in whichever endeavor it is, the more you have to think, right? Because it comes down to like small, fine details. But when you're starting off, so much of it is just, just do it, right? Like the Shia LaBeouf meme, just, just do it. If anyone doesn't know, Kevin, what does it mean to be a high value male? Okay. Bam. <laughs> All right. So what I did is high value is not my concept. It's, it's been around for a long time. What I did is I sat down, uh, with some academic, academicians, scholars, anthropologists, sociologists, reading. And I just said, who are the men across time and space, across cultures, across continents, who've always separated themselves from the pack? What are some of the things they shared in common? Uh, and then I just applied and tried to make it as simple as possible. Sales, keep it simple, stupid. One, it starts with income. Yep. We all have heard the three sixes, six figures, six feet, six pack. Yep. Okay. So high value in general starts, uh, I, did, I put a number of $10,000 a month 
because that number hundred thousand dollars has been with us since the 80s 85 yeah. in particular that's when it popped up mm-hmm. didn't make it guys don't shoot the messenger and <laughs> uh you need to make that money over a certain length of time guys you know anybody can have a good year yep, yep anybody sure. jeremy lynn had a couple of good games he's not going to the hall of fame <laughs> uh, you know five years is the target but three years is when you're in striking distance because that each one of these characteristics or criteria lean, lends itself to other aspects of a man as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, third, high value men must recognize you as their peer mm-hmm. or potential peer. Oh. Right. This is why you see older guys who are up here befriending younger guys who has that they look like they can do it. It's a club. It's a fraternity because you know anybody will tell you once you start getting to certain levels of success it starts to thin out a lot yep yeah i mean that's true with like anything right like um again i come like i've done martial arts since i was a little kid well not really a little kid i guess like 13 14 um and and you see this even with like in jujitsu right you have the belt system right like people will like befriend, you'll see like black belts and brown belts and purple belts befriend the whites and blue belts that are like really gifted or and or hardworking, and you can tell this guy's going to be here a long time, right? And a lot of it's it's kind of like a, a positive feedback loop in a sense, because a lot of the time somebody shows initiative and they show potential, a lot of the time people will be willing to put resources into them, right? Um, and it's it's the, that's the reality of the situation everywhere. Right. If people see potential in someone, they're going to be willing to, you know, put resources, even if it's just like time helping them or time mentoring them, into that person specifically. Um, you know, it doesn't always pan out, right? Because some people just, you know, you, it, the the you know, you have to have like a again like like he was saying saying right like a long period of time like when he was talking about like three or five years of making this amount of money to show that you can make this money over the, an extended period of time. The same thing is true in like in again like in jujitsu. Some guys have, like are freakishly athletic, and they come to the gym the first day, and they're just absolute monsters, like genetically gifted, right? Quick learners, freakishly athletic. But you know, they they're the kind of person that like only stays with something for a month, and then they move on to the next thing. And you know, again, like you know, for that month, you might be you, you see the potential in that person, you're like fuck, this guy could really do it. Um, but then again, like after the first month, they start, you know, they're only showing up to every other class. And then like in a month later, they're showing up like once a week. And then, you know, the, the next month, you know, you might see them every two, three weeks. And then all of a sudden they're just gone. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the, you know, bo- like that is, that is such a true statement. And I think it applies to, you know, everything across the board. Um, you know, having su- a success rate over a long period of time and showing potential. Um it's just, yeah, it's 100%. Like, that's, that's so accurate. Uh, four. It has to be, um, what did I say? Uh, visibility. Mm-hmm. You know, it needs to be LinkedIn level. People have to be able to understand what you do. You're a cardiologist at Johns Hopkins. You're, you're a vice president of mergers and acquisitions at uh, Morgan Stanley. I'm an entrepreneur. Two of those three things, we at a glance know what it means. The third one requires more information. LinkedIn level, meaning that um, people, it, it needs to be visible to mm-hmm. where people can mm-hmm. kind of understand it. Um, you have a, a, a phantom, great, but if it's in the garage all the time, do you really have a phantom? Mm. <laughs> True. Does it really matter? You have a dust uh, collector. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and the last two, are, this is not an order of importance, but the last two are the most important. Network. You mm-hmm. must have a network of other high value men mm-hmm. and others. No one can have a network of sheer high value men. But let's say we are all five of us were gonna sit down and do business. Let's say you had 50 million, let's say you had 10 million, 10 million, 10 million, 10 million, and he has 50. And each one of us has a, a Rolodex or a network of 250 high value contacts. We all sit down and we're going to make a venture. He has twice the money, he has no contacts. Mm. He, He's we, worthless. It's more likely that that person is going to come and leech off of our network. Okay. That's true. Yep. And he's going to try to buy his way in. And I'm sorry. It. We have the money, but we know that our contacts took us a lot to gain. And you're going to guard your territory yeah. because having uh, networks of contacts 
is immeasurable. And this is why networks are so important. See, I'll say there's no real high value loaners because a lot of times guys will try to buy their way into it, but lack the social skills. Even if you put him in contact with your network, he likely just blow our connections because he doesn't have the people skills. Mm. You can see this with like, again, to, to kind of take it back to the, uh, the fitness, you know, martial arts analogy. You can see this with the gyms too. So like one of the things we would do when the gym was still open here is we would constantly be talking to people from other gyms, doing, you know, training with other gyms, exchange, exchanging information, exchanging techniques, right? Um, so even on like a martial arts scale that applies, and you really, like a, one guy could ruin that a lot of the time, right? If you had some kind of shithead that came to your gym and then you go spar somewhere and he's like not sparring properly and like actually trying to fuck somebody up and like hurt them, you, you know, your whole gym loses respect for that, right? And it, it, so it's, you know, kind of the same thing on like a much lower scale, right? Obviously I'm talking about like combat sports. These guys are talking about millions of dollars, but you know, it's, this. I mean, this again, something that's applicable on largely all levels. And, and you see this like even when it comes to, um, you know, like YouTubers is another great example of this, right? Like you'll have so many of like the biggest Twitch streamers and YouTubers, it's because of the contacts they make, right? And then they'll do like a collaboration with this person, a collaboration with the other person. And then you'll have people that make really good content, but they're very much in like their own little echo chamber or <clears throat> sometimes even like completely on their own. And it's a lot harder for them to blow up, right? Um, you'll have guys that, you know, you, you can make banger video after banger video after banger video, but if, you know, it's only getting out to like tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of people, it's gonna be very difficult to reach that 20, 30 million, oh, excuse me, I got the hiccups that 20, 30 million a point that a lot of, um, you know, the super huge creators make, right? So you'll see guys like, you know, that kind of, like, like I'll use like the side men and like Logan Paul as an example, right? Guys that kind of make content in that same kind of, um, I don't even know what you would call it, like kind of like mindless entertainment type avenue. Um, there's a million dudes doing that, right? But they don't have the contacts, they don't have the, you know, people to make it with, right? So people don't build up, even even the fan base doesn't build up a relationship around you, right? Whereas if you make one video with Logan or KSI, instantly you're going to be huge, like uh, Mike Maljack or whatever his name is, right? Logan Paul's buddy, right? I think he's got like two or three million subs. He didn't really do any of the groundwork himself. He just worked his way into Logan's circle, um, you know, did what he did to get there. I actually don't know too much of the backstory, but like he didn't, he wasn't like a big YouTuber before he did that. And you'll have other people on the other end who've been doing YouTube for years and years and years, but they're not able to get to that level because they don't have the connections. So yeah, I mean, that, that's something that's like applicable to everything too. Networking is so important. And lastly, utility. You must be of use to others and the group. Bam. Yeah. If you're of no use, I, I want to be used. Yeah. You, you say, Kevin, when are you going to come down and such and so forth? Uh, okay. What, what good is all this high value talk if you're not going to be useful to somebody? Yeah. Mm. It's just self serving bullshit. Um, now, I don't expect you. Even being useful is kind of self serving in a way, right? Because the reality of the situation is y'all have people that are like 100% just going to take advantage of that. But over time, you can kind of cut them off. But like the majority of people, right? The majority of intelligent people, at least. If, if you do them a favor, it's always in the back of their head, right? Like, I owe this guy, right? So, like, when you do that shit, even if it's subconsciously, you're not consciously thinking about it, right? It, it, it's, um, oh, what's it? There's actually a term for this in evolutionary psychology. I can't remember what it's called. Um, uh, I think it's evolved reciprocity, where basically you give somebody something because you expect that they would give you something in return eventually if you need it, right? Uh, so, yeah, like a lot of this, you know, again, like, we, you know, we're always talking about like Evo Psych. A lot of this has to do with Evo Psych, too anybody to be a martyr you're going to get something out of it but I, it, high value is a mindset more than anything else but you have to have these other markers because whether we like it or not the market decides yes yeah. the market Very decides true. everything the market decided that phantom is worth more than this it's worth more than that um the market decides all of, all of our relative value, and what we can do is do what we can to increase or decrease it according to the outcomes we want. And I say this to a lot of guys: don't kill yourself if you're not high value. That's not the only way to be successful. Yeah. There are plenty of ways to live a fulfilled life that doesn't require 
all the things that I'm talking about. That's 100 percent true. I know a guy I went to high school with, and um, you know he's got a been dating the same girl since he was 15. Um, I, I don't know if they're engaged now, but they live together. They have two kids. He's got a, like a decently good paying middle class, upper middle class job. I mean, that's the life he wants to live, right? He just wants a normal middle class life, right? There's lots of people out there that just want that normal middle class life. And I feel like so many people kind of look down on that now, right? Um, you know, it's like if you're not like hyper wealthy, you're a complete failure. And the reality of the situation is there's a lot of people out there that just want to live normal middle class lives, have beer with their buddies on Friday and Saturday night, you know, maybe, you know, get enough money that they can afford like a four wheeler or a snowmobile and go out, you know, maybe buy a cottage, right? Like a small th- couple thousand dollar place way up north, right? I live in Canada, so that's what like a lot of the middle class people do around here. They'll have their main house and then up north, you know, somewhere they'll have a cottage worth like fifty to $150,000 because the land's so cheap up there. There's a lot of people that just want to live that normal life, right? Like, you know, you don't have to be super incredibly successful to be happy. Um, and I think a lot of people lose track of that, especially nowadays because like people have so much access to the incredibly wealthy, right? Like you can just go on your Instagram or your TikTok or whatever and you see all these like insanely wealthy people who are like driving around in cars worth like fucking, you know, millions of dollars and you're like, shit, like I only have my fucking Ford pickup truck or I only have my, you know, my Honda Civic and it's like, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with living that life. Like, yeah, it's not for everyone, but, you know, I mean, we need people like that, right? And a lot of people are happy like that. They're completely happy just living a chill, normal middle class existence and you know they should be perfectly fine to live that existence so i think that's one thing that's kind of gotten lost in this thing all right so that's the end of the video um rest in peace to kevin samuels uh i think you know one of the most important figures in the manosphere especially in the uh the black side of the manosphere in i mean probably ever honestly i think you know he's done a lot of great work and uh yeah so rest in peace to him uh like comment subscribe let me know what you think below and i will see you in the next video